Do you want to know the 10 limiting mindsets of homeschool moms that I most frequently see? I'm Teresa Wiedrich. I'm a certified life coach and homeschool mentor, graduated homeschool mom of four kids, and I walk alongside homeschool moms to shed what's not working in their homeschool and mom lives to support them to stop pushing through. Stop pushing through and instead learn to meet your needs. Set realistic expectations, build supportive community, and build your confidence. This is what I do with homeschool moms around the world, and I'm honored to do so. It's such a delight working with women. I just, it's as fun as homeschooling ever was. It's different, I miss homeschooling, but I definitely love doing this work. And these are just 10 of the limiting mindsets that I see regularly. So if you feel like, hmm, Sometimes I wonder if I'm the only one experiencing this thing. I'm here to tell you, truly no. Truly no. Because I am hearing these concepts or discussion points on repeat. By the way, they are just 10. There are more, but I limited it to 10. So the first limiting mindset is feeling inadequate, not good enough. Many homeschool moms struggle with that persistent sense of, is this good enough? In how you're approaching your homeschool, in how you're mothering, in all the things. The second thing is feeling overwhelmed and frustrated because homeschooling can lead to, well, stress because there's a lot going on and there's a lot of voices going on. And when we haven't learned to manage our big emotions and really create a plan to address our off-repeated big emotions, then we're going to have routine frustrating days. We don't have to, but we do because we often push through. The third thing is that we have unrealistic expectations and then false guilt. We see this goal, we maybe see somebody else's homeschool room, or we hear about our child uh, not doing the same things that another child is doing, or our child is being compared by a relative and we ask ourselves oh dear my child should know that by this point I should maybe require us to sit at the table more or I should maybe block in more time to do certain things with them or I should have a clean house all the time or so many things you fill in the blank there are so many unrealistic expectations that we homeschool moms have and then we feel guilty and they're not even realistic the fourth thing is ignoring personal needs. That's why I wrote my book. So I am keenly experienced in this one. I know this one well, and I hear it on repeat from other people. I hear that it's hard to get a shower once a week. And though that's typical in the first couple of months, maybe when our babies are in our homes, um, you should be able to go for a shower. Or as I heard this morning, it's hard for me to pee by myself. I remember that. You should be able to pee by yourself. Ignoring your needs is definitely one of the most common things that we experience as homeschool moms. And it seems like it would be okay in the early years that we could put it off, but the problem is we keep putting it off and we still have kids around and then we keep putting it off. And then our kids are teenagers and we're still putting it off. So we need to address our needs. The fifth thing is isolation. We feel isolated. Uh, our kids aren't because we're bringing them to so many places. They're doing so many cool things and we're waiting in the minivan and we aren't building the kind of community that they are. And I heard it this morning from a homeschool podcaster in Canada, Lisa Marie Fletcher. She'd shared that she noticed that people are just kind of like disconnected and just, you know, just doing their own thing still after the pandemic. And here we are for almost five years later and isolated and it's no judgment it makes a lot of sense why people lose community disconnect from community don't feel supported um, have challenges with relationships but we have to create a community we have to create a support network because we can't do this homeschool thing alone stress management is the next thing it's a limiting mindset we don't manage our stress we just kind of keep barreling through trying to do all the things on our to-do list and um i should tell you 
now that I am a graduated homeschool mom and I am not even homeschooling anymore, I can see I still have a to-do list and I could be wed to the to-do list, but the to-do list is always with us or else we're not here anymore. And so the to-do list is always here, but maybe we should create a to-live list where we are doing things on the to-live list that energize us. We should at least include those things. The seventh thing is relationship challenges a discussion point that really should have a conversation because not only do we sometimes feel isolated, but also we are in relationships, whether it's a partnered relationship or family relationships or friendships where we really don't feel connected. We don't feel supported by other people. And you know what? That's not going to make you feel seen, heard and understood. And you were meant to be you on this planet and you were meant to be seen, heard and understood. So both you, you should expect that from others that they will see, hear and understand you. And also you should be able to see them and hear them and understand them and build relationships that matter. Also, you're creating a relationship with someone if it is your partnered relationship. If you're in a partnering relationship, if you are in a relationship, you are actually helping your children learn how to be in relationship. The eighth thing is to navigate. People don't typically want to deal with their difficult seasons alongside someone because they're kind of embarrassed about whatever their challenge is. I'm telling you, you're not alone. If you have whatever challenge it is, you got a lot of friends around the world. Now, I don't necessarily engage all the possible challenges that are out there, but all the things I'm speaking to today, I engage them all the time. And so if you want, you can always book a no obligation conversation with me to learn more about coaching but also to create an action plan so you can address whatever that challenge is. You don't have to live and exist in that difficult season by yourself. The ninth thing is that you may have, and it's not necessarily where you're at in your season right now, but you may have lost your passion for homeschooling. That's a thing. This is definitely not something that people talk about because we somehow get to this place where we're like, homeschooling really is the best thing. I have to do it. And I obviously, I obviously agree. And also, I've been there too, where I was like, oh, I'm not sure I'm doing right by my kids if I'm really not wanting to show up. So there are options, there's ways of shifting things in your homeschool family life so that you can renew or reignite that passion. And sometimes you might need to make a massive shift because it doesn't serve your kids and it doesn't serve you to keep doing the thing even if you really don't want to be doing the thing anymore. And the last thing is about prioritizing self care. When I talk about self care, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm not talking about pedicures and manicures. Clearly, I'm not. <laughs> I am really talking about your wellness, your overall sense of wellness. What are you doing to take care of you? <clears throat> what are you doing to take care of your thoughts? What are you doing to take care of your relationships? What are you doing? to foster your own creativity so that you can continue to develop who you are long after your kids are gone. Because when they finally grow and launch and you discover that you're here on your own with a lot of unused curriculum because you didn't use it all, you won't, I know you won't, and you're gonna have a ton of read alouds, you could begin reading aloud to your dog I may have, or you could homeschool the neighbor's kids, or you could have more kids. <laughs> no, me neither. But you could do those things, or you could acknowledge that you're going to have a life after homeschooling. So what do you want to do afterward? If you don't know, that's okay. But maybe you could foster your interest, your creativity now, even in the small little minutes or little stretches of time that you have once a week and incorporate the things that matter to you, the little creative things that are just fun, just interesting. Maybe you're starting a business, maybe you're not, and you're just enjoying your hobby, but incorporate your activities, your creativity into your homeschool days too. So those are 10 limiting mindsets that I frequently see with homeschool moms. If you know that there is another one you frequently see, I would love to hear, share it below. And if you would like, you're welcome to book a no obligation conversation with me to learn more about coaching and create an action plan for you. Have a great week.